Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is kind of funny for me. Uh, I get asked often about what makeup brushes are my favorite or what do I use to get the looks that I create. And uh, it's funny because I really don't care about brushes. I am not one of those people that loves to buy expensive brushes or must have the latest collection of brushes. For me, it often feels like spending money on brushes is a waste of my money. I would much rather buy product than buy brushes. So I've learned to basically buy a few staples and stick with those and then I've bought some more along the line, but I really don't have an expensive brush collection. So maybe this will be helpful to you. Um, I do get a lot of questions, so here's hoping that it is beneficial. All right, let's get into it. I'm just going to start with, I guess, face and then move straight onto eyes. My brushes are gonna be dirty because I have just used them, but I'll insert clips of what they look like clean. So starting off with foundation brush options, my absolute favorite way to apply foundation is using the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I've never used a beauty blender, so I can't compare it. Uh, this is just, I mean, you wet it so it gets a little bit bigger and it's it becomes very squishy. But there's something about the way that this applies foundation to the face that just really pushes it into the skin and makes it not sit on the skin, but almost become one with it. So it's kind of like mooshing the product in so that it gives you an absolutely flawless finish. And I just really like the way that it feels. So hands down, my favorite way to apply foundation is with the sponge. Now, not all foundations work into the skin very well with a sponge. So sometimes I have to switch it up to a brush. And more recently, I have been using brushes for some unknown reason, but it's just nice to change it up. My absolute favorite foundation brushes are also by Real Techniques, and this is the Expert Face Brush, which I think most people are familiar with. And the other one is the Buffing Brush. This is more of a flat top. It's got a bit of a rounded edge on the sides, so it's fairly easy just to, as it says, buff it into the skin. Uh, I like this one because it's slightly bigger than the Expert Face Brush, so it gets your foundation done a lot faster. Uh, the Expert Face Brush is equally good, just a little bit slower. It's got more of a dome top, so you will find it takes more time, but it's great for getting into the nooks and crannies. These are fantastic. All right, I'm not a powder person, but if it happens that I apply powder, I will be using the Real Techniques powder brush. This guy is huge. Like this is a big, big old sucker. And like I said, I don't apply powder very often, but when I do, I use this thing cause it's just enormous. So it covers my entire face very quickly. All right, moving on to bronzer. I am a daily bronzer wearer. I don't even have to be wearing foundation to apply uh, bronzer because I just like the way it adds dimension to my face. So I never change this brush out. I always use this brush for bronzer and that is the multitasking brush by Real Techniques. It's just something about the shape and the size that fits perfectly into the areas where I apply bronzer. And it just, I find it busted out nicely. So I, I mean, I use this one every single day and I love it so, so much. Now moving on to blush brushes and I oddly use an enormous number of blush brushes depending on which blush I'm using. If it's something that has quite a powdery texture or is easy to blend and very soft, I will use the Real Techniques blush brush because it's, it's, I mean, it's huge. So you don't want it picking up too much product, which is why I tend to use it with powdery ones. And it just, it gets in there and it buffs it out beautifully. So that's for certain blushes. If I'm going for more of a stiff blush, um, more specifically the Clinique Cheek Pops, which I love, but there's something about the texture on top of it that makes it a little bit harder to pick up product. I will go with something a little bit smaller and a little bit stiffer. This is compared to the other brush, like this one's really, ooh, dust kick up, that's nice. Um, it's really floppy, but this one is quite stiff. So this is the, again, Real Techniques cheek brush. And I find this is better for just getting into the pattern of a product if it's embossed, and then just applying it to my cheeks and buffing it out. And then my other option for cheeks is I use two different stippling brushes depending on the product. So the MAC 130 brush is a very small duo fiber brush that I tend to prefer using with my Tarte blushes. Something about the texture of those blushes seems to work really well with this duo fiber brush. Again, that's the MAC 130. However, if I am using a cream product, then I go for something 
that won't pick up the color as much. The duo fiber, I believe, does have some real fibers in it, like real uh, animal fibers in it. So real fibers will pick up um, more product and absorb it, which is what I don't want to happen with a cream blush. So I will use the e.l.f. Small Stipple Brush for anything that is a cream product because this whole thing is synthetic. It doesn't pick up as much of the product or rather, it doesn't get let the product soak as much into the bristles, so I can use all of that product on my cheeks. That's an awful lot of blush brushes. I wasn't, I never really thought about it. <laughs> all right, my last face brush is the Real Techniques, again, contour brush. And I use this primarily for highlighting the cheeks. It is quite big, so I don't know if it would work on everyone. Maybe my face is large enough for it. But it, I really like how it just applies highlighter to the tops of my cheekbones. And it, since it's so enormous, it does deposit a ton. That's okay, I like a lot of highlighter, but somebody who wants a little less highlighter on their face might wanna go with something a little bit smaller. But yeah, this is the contour brush. All right, moving on to the eyes. And this is probably where I have the most brushes, um, just because eyeshadow is something that I personally really love to wear. So I tend to have more brushes for that area. To start off with, my primary crease transition brushes are Real Techniques, and I have the Dome Shadow Brush and the Deluxe Crease Brush. There's not a whole lot of difference between these two. They are pretty similar. I mean, this one is slightly bigger and this one is the Deluxe Crease Brush, but I mean, these both deposit color right into your crease and, as I keep saying, upper crease, and deposit exactly what I want where I want it. And because they're so rounded and large, they won't pack the color on too deeply. Instead, they'll buff them out very nicely, which is great for adding in a transition shade. So those are my two crease transition blending brushes. Now, the one and only brush that I use to pack shadow onto my lids is the MAC 239 brush, which has been worn out so completely that there's no writing anymore on this. Uh, I really should own more than one because um, I use it daily but this is just, it's short, it's stiff. I like how short it is on the bristle tip and how stiff it is, because you can really ram this into a product and pick up as much product as you want to put it onto your lid. And lid shades is usually where I want the most amount of color. So this guy, it, I, I can't live without this one. Since I bought this one, I don't know how many years ago, it's just fantastic. And that's something that can be said for all of these brushes. I don't go through a lot of brushes because I wash them and I take care of them. And if you do that, they will last almost forever. I had a Mac brush that I got when I was, let's say 15 years old. I'm gonna show that to you in a minute. And the only reason I ever replaced it is because I stepped on the handle and broke it. Otherwise, it would have been fine even 20 years later. So keep that in mind. And that brush that I was just talking about was the Mac 275 brush. Now, this was the first brush I ever owned and probably the best brush to own because I bought this when I was, I think I just said 14 or 15, something like that. And because it's got an angle, this was good enough for me at that age, who didn't have a lot of money, to apply shadow to my lid. And then if I flipped it around, I then had a curve facing the other way and I could blend out my crease shade through there. So if you're looking for one brush to get, this might be the one for you. It is a little bit bigger, so if you've got small eyes, you might not want, like it as much. But I mean, I used this guy for years and years and years, and it wasn't until I got more into makeup that I discovered maybe I should get some more brushes. But yeah, so that's the MAC 275. Now that's what I used to use it for. Now, I tend to use it for my um, brow bone shade, and I'm not necessarily saying that this is the best product for that. I've seen better brushes for it, but it's worked for me for years. So I just, I've got some, you know, some attachment issues to this guy, so I just keep using it. And I mean, it blends out my brow bone shade just fine. So yeah, that's the story of this little guy. <laughs> All right, so for working in the outer corner of the eye, I have three brushes that are basically identical. I have the MAC 217, which is, I think, infamous on YouTube. And then the Real Techniques ones that are almost the same. They're just a little bit bigger. They're a little bit taller and a little bit wider. And they are the base shadow brushes. You'll notice I've got a silver and a purple, but they are the same one. They just came in different packages. These brushes I interchange and it doesn't really matter to me which one I'm using. There is no difference between the MAC and the Real Techniques. 
I just use that to place color into the outer corner of the eye and then buff it through the crease. I will say that I don't feel like these will pick up product in the same way that the MAC 239 does. They, this is more of a grabby product and these are more of a buffing product. So if you're looking for something to deposit a lot of color on your outer corner, for me, they don't work that way. I do need to really like jam my br brush into the product and then keep layering it on the outer corner. That being said, the reason I love them so much is that they are great for blending out the shade that you put in your inner corner. So if you're really looking to put more intense color in the outer corner, use a flat shader brush first and then use one of these to blend it out. These are, can't live without these guys either. And the other brush that I can't live without is the MAC 210 brush. And this is a very, very fine pointed eyeliner brush. I can't do winged liner with one of those angle brushes. It's just not happening. They seem way too enormous and I don't know how people get that sharp edge with one of those. So instead I use one of these, I guess people call them artist brushes because they're so tiny they look more of a paintbrush. And I use this to draw my winged liner. So it deposits color perfectly all along the lid and then helps me create the wing. This was the first brush I ever started using for gel liner and I'm so glad that it was the first one I grabbed for because while the learning curve might have been a little bit steep, I got absolutely precise lines as soon as I got the technique down. So yeah, the MAC 210 brush is my absolute recommendation for gel liner. All right, I have two remaining brushes and they're more circumstantial brushes. I don't necessarily use these all the time, but they are very handy to have in my arsenal. All right, the first one is the pencil brush by MAC and that is the 219 brush. I just use this for blending out my lower lash line. I do have a lot of lower lash line makeup on in my videos, but I am not someone who wears lower lash line makeup on the regular. I find it really irritating to my eyes and if I'm at work, I wanna at least be able to like scratch a little bit of my lower lash line. So I don't tend to put mascara and product down there very often, but if I do, then I use the MAC 219 brush because that just places the color perfectly and then you can blend out with it as well. This is also excellent for getting liner into the crevices between your lashes. I, as I've said, I'm quite blonde. So I need, if I'm doing a really dark black eye, I need product to get between the roots of my lashes so that they do, that little flap of skin doesn't stick out too much. This one is great for that. And the only other remaining brush is the Real Techniques Accent Brush. And this is a little tiny baby brush that I find really excellent for filling in the inner corner of the eye with a highlighter or applying glitter. Because it's so tiny, you can be really specific with where you're putting the glitter. And for me, that's that's key because I will tend to go overboard with glitter and then it ends up everywhere. So yeah, that is the Real Techniques Accent Brush. So out of all of that, I'm sure you've noticed that I have a really huge preference for MAC and Real Techniques brushes. They are just what works for me, so I am happy to use them every single day. I occasionally try new brushes, but I really just prefer to stick to what I know, and this is what I know, and these are what make me happy. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about what brushes I use on the daily, and maybe it will give you some tips and tricks on how best to do your own makeup. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.